everyone. My name is Jacob. I'm 27 years old. I'm recording this video today to try and um, give everyone a message about how I've been going and what has helped me on my speech journey. First of all, I wanted to thank a good friend of mine, his name is Ray Potter. He's, in the past, he's dedicated a lot of time towards helping me. And yeah, I'm very grateful for all of the help and the time that he invested in me. And for everyone at Speakeasy, it's very important to have a support group that you can go to. And it's important to feel, it's important to know that you are not alone. Um, I think a speech impediment, it is quite rare. And it isn't every day that you actually meet someone who has the same condition as you are. And and it's it's places like Speakeasy that kind of they kind of bridge the gap, don't they? So yeah, it's very good and I'm extremely grateful for for my time doing speech therapy and learning all of the things that have have come to help me. Now a little about me, I'm 27 years old, currently I'm living here in Ipswich in Bandamba and now this, it may sound a bit strange to some people. However, I've I've learned a thing or two about I suppose in terms of self development and I've in the last two years I've found something that has completely cha changed my life. And it has turned me from an introverted, shy person who's, you know, pretty reserved, doesn't always get, get his word in, to someone who's very confident now, and I'd even say extroverted to a certain extent. I think I'm a bit of both. However, what I have to say is I've found a connection between discipline and confidence, self-image, all of that stuff, forming good habits, healthy, positive habits, and I've felt that, I've found, should I say, that if you are doing right by yourself in terms of you know, living in a good way, living with good moral conduct, I suppose, and if you are able to eliminate any habit that you have, I mean, we all have bad habits, right? Any habit that you have that may or may not bring you subconscious guilt, shame, frustration, all of those things, even though we may not be consciously aware of it, it I've noticed it plays a it plays a part in in our 
in our persona and and it obviously flows on to speech as well. So what I've done, and it has taken extreme amounts of discipline to do this, but for the last two years, I have been celibate. So that means I've basically, yeah, I've been celibate. It's pretty self-explanatory. And on the surface, you might not think that, what does this have to do with stuttering? But I can, I can tell you that it has a lot to do with improving, improving, I'd say, your nervous system and and the connections in your brain because there's actually been studies about a man's semen is actually incredibly nutrient dense it's powerful I mean it obviously is the ingredient to create a human life here in our world and and basically the whole idea of it is if you keep that energy to yourself and you don't expel it it really does wonders for your body and it does wonders for your brain should I say and yeah so that's one part of it and another part of it is being able to ex- uh, achieve extremely difficult goals. Anything in your life that you think is very difficult to overcome, if you find a way to overcome that, that is going to incredibly increase your confidence and that is going to help you in more ways than you would probably recognize. I've honestly changed so much from who I was three years ago even. I obviously started this journey two years ago and and I'm still going strong. You know, it's been difficult, it's been a challenge, but it has been character building and I can I'd recommend any of you members that are my age for example 20s 30s I think that this will be extremely powerful for you and it'll it'll complement your speech therapy because it's almost like if you're able to heal inwards, it's kind of like you're getting to the root of the, of the problem. Whereas speech therapy is very useful in terms of, I suppose, trying to... Uh, trying to help the issue and trying to and trying to make it not so not so painful and not so severe and it does it does help however i'm sure i'm sure you all realize that like sometimes it can be really hard to to slow down it is a challenge However, however, I found that as as I've been on this journey of of being celibate, and I suppose you could say holding on to my sexual energy, I've I've found it a lot easier to stay calm 
and to and to stay grounded in conversations and my eye contact too has really improved. I remember, um, you know, like years ago, I was in speech therapy with Amanda. If you're watching this, hello. Um, and she'd always tell me, you know, like to try to look at her when I'm speaking. And that's something that I always, always struggled with. I'd always struggled with eye contact because if I'd start stuttering, I'd just automatically just look away, whether it was embarrassment, you know. I'm sure we've all been there. Yeah, so I'm hopefully... I know this is a bit... Um, it's a bit of a taboo subject, I suppose. But I wouldn't be saying this if I didn't think it would it would completely change change a person's life like it's changed mine. And I may not be able to explain like the ins and outs of like why it has helped so much, but I can tell you that I have the confidence now to to just go up to random strangers and just strike up a conversation and and strangely enough I I don't actually identify as a stutterer anymore and and I think that that that, that is actually quite freeing because I think we all know that what you focus on and what you what you continually say to yourself and think to yourself, it kind of amplifies and it kind of expands and expands and it becomes a belief, really. And yeah, so uh, yeah, so thank you again to David as well for reaching out to me um, and organizing me to, to record this video. I've enjoyed it.